All right, so welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm going to be doing my continuation of how to uh, operate and program the pushing uh, PX888K. Uh, I find that the software is a lot easier to use. So to start off with, uh, I'm using the Balfang UV5R cable uh, that plugs into my USB. So basically with Windows 10, as soon as you plug it in, uh, Windows 10 will go install the, uh, the prolific driver for it to make sure that that cable works um, because, it, because it's basically a serial cable in a way. So to find out what COM port that we're using, uh, go into uh, your device manager, whatever way you know how to get to it. Go into your ports and you'll see right here USB serial CH340, we're using COM3. All right, now that we know our COM port, uh, the next thing is to install your software for programming this radio. Um, thanks to 409shop.com, which is a website that sells radios and such, uh, they sent me this file and I installed it just like any other software. And once that's installed, uh, you can open it up. Where is it? There we are. And uh, basically, this is your software. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, set your communication port, set it to COM3. So now that we're on COM3, we know that we can now communicate with the radio. And then you can just turn on the radio, which mine's already on, and you know you'll be able to communicate with it. All right, so the next thing is, as soon as I got my second radio, um, I wanted to see what the default file looked like. Also, I wanted it just in case something went wrong when I was trying to program it, uh, just so I had the, the original file for it. So I'm going to open that up and just show you guys what that looks like. So the radio comes with 30 channels already pre-programmed in. Uh, they're using wideband. Uh, some of the channels are using a decode and encode. They have all the frequencies set up for the receive and transmit frequencies. Uh, they don't have any scrambler set up. Uh, scrambler is all off and the op, op signal this is for a and i for when it sends like messages like the name of the radio to another radio so you know who you're communicating with that's where all the a and i is um, i won't be really getting into the a and i because i'm still learning that myself what i wanted to show was the basics of setting up a channel um, especially since i'll be using this for airsoft i know there's a lot of people out there that play airsoft that use this radio and uh, they do it manually, some of them, but I'm just showing that there's an easier way of doing this, especially when you have over 100 channels to load up onto this radio. This is the easier way to do it, and it also gives you ability to set your advanced um, functions a lot quicker, like the scrambler. To sit, that, sit there and do that for every channel and have them go to the menu, then change the channel, then go back in the menu, change channel, go back in the menu again to set it for every channel. It's just easier to come in here and click them to whatever you want to use and turn it on for all of them. And same with the a and if you want all your channels to be using a and and send a name, to do it through here instead of manual is a lot easier. All right, so the two screens that I'm going to be looking at in the software today are the optional features and channel information. There are other screens here, don't have to really worry about. The DTMF, MSK, and 5-Tone, those are advanced function functionalities for the a and We can do simple a and without using those. All right, so the first thing is setting up channels. So, for example, uh, I closed my window, but anyways, make sure my webcam's still working. Sometimes that glitches out. So, these are all your FR FRS and GMRS channels. I have them printed out, so I won't need this screen up in front of me, but you can go get them. You can also go to the Kenwood website and get all their ProTalk channels. You can go to Motorola and get all their channels as well if you want to program them in. All right, so we'll minimize that screen. So to program a channel in uh, for GMRS is pretty straightforward. <coughs> I'll just do the first channel on channel 31. So it's 462. Make sure you put your dot in there, or it'll default to four, 400,000, 
or 400.0000. So you just label the first one, go to the next box and click on it, and it'll auto fill the rest of it. Personally, I use narrow band, so you can go in here, you can switch it to narrow band for the wide narrow band lane. Uh, we don't have to worry about decode or encode. We're using high power. We want it to add it to our scan, that's fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about the push to talk IDs or the BCL. If I want to make this scrambled, I could say I want to use scrambler eight and you'd have to do this to the other radio as well. Both radios would have to be, have the same settings so you can communicate because scramble basically makes it so your voice is garbled and you can't understand it. And you want to turn on your scrambler. We won't worry about ANI, but just to show, these are the options, DTMF, 5-tone MSK, and that's what I was talking about on this side here, where you have the advanced options. We're not going to worry about ANI for that, but I will touch base on that a little bit. And this makes it a lot simpler, too, because you can set up your optional features for ANI names, and it's coming here and pick DTMF or whatever, and boom, it's automatically done. Instead of having to go in through every single channel one by one, going back and forth through the menu to get it done. So that's GRMS channel number one, all set up and able to be used. Uh, we really don't need to be having the scrambler on, but I just wanted to show that. So I'm going to turn it back to default. Let's say you want to do a Kenwood Pro Talk um, using the UHF 5 watt. For example, there's multiples of it, but you can go 464. Dot, this would be channel one on the ProTalk UHF, uh, like the model TK3402. Plug that in. However, on this one, there's a, is a decode and encode, and it's 67 for the for channel one. And if, again, if you want, you can be wide band, but I like to use narrow band. So there we go. We got. It. That one set up, very simple. So you just keep on going in and let's say we want to do a Motorola channel next. And we want channel re channel one from a Motorola from their 5 watt, like for example, their model RDV uh, 5100. Their channel one is 151.6240. And it's using also a decode and encode of 67. And you can leave it on wideband if you want. So there you go. That's how simple it is to just put in your channels. Those are set up. You can set up your scrambler. You can set up your optional signal if you have A and I set up in the optional features. All right. So... I'm going to get into uh, the optional features because that's pretty much, once you've done your channels, you can set up your optional features and uh, you're good to go. So squelch level is default of five. You can change that. Um, your voice activation here, default is two seconds. I usually set that to one second, so it's a little bit quicker. The power on message. This is uh, when you buy it from the store. This is what it'll say when you turn it on. I renamed my radio to spec one. Uh, this section right here underneath, this is for A and I. So for example, if I transmit to someone, which I showed in my last video, it showed like one, two, three, four, five, and something else. I think it said spec one on it as well. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want it to say. So on mine, I have it say spec one. Uh, this is for your beginning of transmission end of transmission and basically there's your ANI set up when you say okay to this it saves it and then if you wanted to go into your optional sig signal and set it to MSK whenever you transmit to another radio that has ANI set up as well they'll be able to get say okay that's uh that person spec one is communicating with me spec two is communicating with me spec three whatever you've labeled it as so a lot easier to sit here and set up uh exact uh to set up this feature of ANI, this is very basic. There's other advanced stuff that I haven't gone into yet, and I'm still learning it. Maybe in a, a future video, I'll talk about it. Uh, your timeout timer. Uh, this is 
I set this to 60 seconds, so basically after transmitting after 60 seconds, the radio will automatically stop broadcasting. This saves you power and such just in case the button's being pushed by accident. I always keep the battery save on. Um, you don't have to worry about work mode A or work mode B. These are your A and B channels because it is dual channel. Um, this is just basically shows uh, channel name, channel frequency. That's when you're scrolling through with the escape button. Um, I'll show you that information. So you don't have to worry about that because you can change it to whatever you want through the radio very easily. Uh, your scan mode is set to time uh, automatically. This was for the advanced uh, scan. So I explained that in my previous video about um, basically one means that it'll keep on going through, find a channel and stay on it. The next one will uh, listen in for like five seconds and then continue on scanning. The other one uh, does a little bit different thing. I forget. I said I mentioned it in my last video. Anyways, uh, backlight, back color. As you can see, you got your colors, blue, orange, purple. Your auto key lock, this is for, you can turn that on so buttons don't get pushed by accident. It just locks it and then you just unlock it. Um, voice announce English, I turn that off. The beep on, this is when you're touching your uh, keypad and such, it'll beep. I turn that off. And the priority channel, I showed that before in my previous video about the menu that uh, when you do a search, it'll go like channel one, then check channel two, then I'll go back to channel one and check it, then I'll go to channel three, then channel one, then channel four, and I'll keep on going back and forth like that. Roger tone, this is basically when you broadcast to someone and then you let go of the button, um, it'll beep, um, just saying that your end of your signal so they know you're not talking anymore. So those are your basic settings and the basic way of just putting in some channels here. Uh, you can save your file if you wish and save it on your computer and that way you can clone it to multiple computers or I mean to multiple radios. So uh, to get, get information off your radio is very simple. Just make sure your radio is on. Uh, go to this little button here. It's got a computer with an arrow pointing at it. You click it. We've already set our COM port. As you can see, the green light is blinking on my radio there, meaning that it's getting information off of it. And you hit OK. And this is what I have programmed into my radio right now. I've got the 22 channels for GRMS. I like the fact that also, if you're going to name every single one of your channels, which I showed in my previous uh, video where that's one of the options, I think it was option 25 or 26, uh, to do that manually, you're looking at like hours of doing that, especially for 122 channels. You'll be sitting there forever. So just come in here, name them. So right here, I've got the Kenwood 1 watts, 2 watts, I have 3 watts, 4 watts, 5 watts. I got the Motorola's. Um, but yeah, up to... I can get it to scroll down 94 maybe move this over a little bit make sure that's still working so you can see 122 channels I got the Motorola's I've named them all so I know it's one watt and then what channel number it is one two three four one two three four five six seven and such some of these are duplications actually I think that uh, when I was trying to get this to work with my work radios and stuff that because they're running 2 watt and these radios are 4 and 5 watt that uh, some of these channels I don't really need but all 122 channels that I have cloned to both radios work you can communicate so um, yeah it's uh, pretty simple uh, let's go into my optional features as you can see I've got them all named got my ANI my priority channel set one second my squash to five that uh, left it at default so very simple this this software makes it so much simpler to program these radios once you have your, all your information typed in like I did on that last screen if you want to send the information over uh, there's a little button here on the left hand corner again beside where the one we were just at for downloading from and this is where you upload it's got arrow to radio and you just click it go OK You'll see it's now writing. You can see the little light blinking on my radio. And all that data is sent. Uh, 
any data that was previously on the radio gets overwritten. So every time you change the radio, whatever you've done to it will automatically be sent to it. So I hope this video helps some of you guys out there just to show the simplification of how uh, to program these radios because manually doing it takes a lot of time and just it's not the easiest. I've heard like the Balfang UV5R is a little bit easier to program. Um, this one you have to like hit menu and go back and forth like I have a book around here somewhere but it took me days to even get a couple channels programmed in and figure it out while this I just typed them all in, set what settings I wanted, sent it off, it was done. So I hope everybody has a great day, have a great, great week, and take care.